can be hard when you grow up. People feel you with doubt. You start thinking about what you're gonna do now. And it's do or die. Gotta make it count. So lose your worries. Let your problems go on. Until my whole body burns out. I ain't never gonna slow down. Welcome everyone, this is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to transform your life with transformational coaching. This is something that I know people are going to think that it is all about mindset. Well, mindset plays a role. We are gonna be having some blogs come out, spoiler alert maybe, that are gonna be talking about values and mindset. But when you look at transforming your life, It can begin with mindset, it's very possible, but sometimes we just have to maybe give ourselves a blanket understanding of what we are in, what we're going through. We don't need mindset yet. Mindset might help us get to the goal, but when we start, maybe our mindset might not be in the best possible place. I remember even for myself, when I was going through dark moments in my life, I did it by myself. I mean, I got coaches later on and I said, whoa, that was so much better than, you know, me suffering for three to six months in a basement, trying to read personal development books. And that's what I did. And I was able to get out. And I found many great mentors through the books that I read. What I can tell you is that you're going to find in your life moments when you want to reach out to somebody, but you don't. This is just because maybe you feel like you don't have the money, financial commitment, maybe. Maybe you feel like you're all alone, no one can help you, or maybe you don't even know that's an option. But there is an option for you. There is an option for you to get out. There is an option for you to transform your mindset. We do have to do some preliminary work in order for that to happen, especially if you're coming from a place of, I mean, extreme negativity and fixation. I mean, most people who are in a place of unhappiness and just of decay, for lack of better words, maybe it is the best word. How can we get out of that? Well, today we're going to be bringing on a transformational life coach, Gerard Grogan. He's going to be helping us understand his process, his story, and then how you can start to change your life, to change your mindset, to change your dreams, and then to help them come into reality. So let's get into that interview with Gerard and myself. Welcome, Gerard Grogan's Coaching in Session. How are you doing today? Doing good, Mike. How are you, man? Doing well. Today, I'm going to have you on as a transformational life coach. We're going to be talking about your work, your history, and how you help people transform their life. Before we begin, can you give us a bit of your backstory and how you got into this work of transformational life coaching? Like a lot of people, I didn't grow up in the healthiest of family environments. There was, you know, some physical abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse, whatever abuse you want, right? I experienced it. And early age, right, I knew that I didn't want to be much, anything like my dad, much less look like him. But my mom and I was having a conversation one time. And then, you know, she said, Gerard, are you getting enough sleep? Because you're starting to look like your dad starting to develop dark circles and bags on your eyes, just like him. And as a 10-year-old kid, when she said that, right, I went straight to the mirror to see what she was talking about. And sure enough, I could see what she was talking about, or at least I accepted what she said as my reality. From then on, right, I became shy. I became insecure. I, back then, it was a name for Pygmalion effect. But, you know, I realized later that I actually became a a victim of the Pygmalion effect. And that led me to becoming a victim of plastic surgery malpractice. And then after going through that and having family and friends turn it back on me, I had to go within to really begin to understand myself, to really begin to understand my psychology and understand, you know, why I do the things I do and why I think the way I think. And from there, I began to read and study and master my psychology. You know, I studied Tony Robbins and and Joe Dispenza and all these other people about how to change the brain, how to rewire the brain, and then how to become the best version of yourself that you can be. That led me to creating the blueprint, you know, my first book, you know, how to recreate yourself in 
six simple steps. And then that led into Total Transformation Leadership Academy, which is a step-by-step -step coaching program that I take a small group of people through to go from where they are to where they want to be. Because I know that, you know, a lot of people are dealing with trauma, mental, and whatever. And I know that in order to become the best version of yourself that you need to be, you have to recreate yourself. I want to ask a quick question, then we're going to get into the conversation. Do you have any siblings? I got, I had seven siblings. My older brother, he passed away, but yeah, I got six now. Okay. I, I apologize for your loss. When you were growing up, right? Did you feel alone, even though you might've had your siblings there with you, maybe to con confide in? I don't think we were taught to kind of share our feelings. You know, we were, we were told, you know, don't cry, don't show your emotions. My dad never said, you know, I love you. He, he really never talked to us, period. You know, our siblings, they were dealing with their own trauma. They were abused too. So they were dealing with their own trauma. I had to actually go inside. No, this is actually great backstory because we're going to have a great conversation now because what you went through, so many people go through. They are going through hardship in their life, whether it be from childhood, abuse, perception, whatever it be, and they fight that fight alone. And then when they eventually become adults, they have to heal, but they still think they have to fight that fight alone. And for me, it's like, why not find people that you can work with to get to a better health, better mindset, transform your life. But many people, they're just these lone warriors. We're taught, especially here in the West, our culture is if you have a problem, it's your problem. Not so much of, okay, let's work as a community. And even with finances, many people don't understand, like in America, it's like, if you have siblings, it's like, all right, this person's gonna go out and do this, this person's gonna go out and do that, and they're all independent of each other. But yet, if you go to certain countries and different parts of the world, the family unit stays together. And so if I pulled my resources with my brother, my sister, we can do so much more than if I just did everything myself. We have this solidary type of mindset. And I wanted to get into that conversation with you now. Why do you think so many people fall into this mindset of fighting the fight alone? Yeah, that's a good question. Like you mentioned in the Black community, there's a stigma against mental health. There's a stigma about about seeking help outside of the family. There's an old saying, what better share your business outside of the family. So you're taught in an early age to deal with whatever family issues that you have, deal with it within the family. And it's hard to do when everybody in the family, right, is dealing with, like I said, their own trauma, their own abuse. I think it's a saying that hurt people hurt people. If you're in a family and the environment, right, that you grow up in is not conducive to your growth and your development, then you're going to kind of perpetuate that same cycle, right? Jim Rohn said, you're a reflection of the five people that you associate with. If everybody that you associate with is hurting and suffering, then that's all you see. So it's kind of like you see model behavior. And then, you, like I said, you just carry that over in, into your own life until you make a conscious decision to change it, right? People who deal with abuse, right, sometimes carry that abuse over into their own relationship until they make a conscious decision that they don't want to perpetuate the same cycle. It's all about learned behavior, model behavior. If you're not consciously aware of it, you know, you continue to perpetuate. It. So it's a cycle of abuse and, and it goes back generation. I definitely agree with that. And also to add, you know, for the people who think like, all right, I'm not going to focus on the five people that I associate with because I'm just going to be by myself. You're going to stay exactly where you are because you are just in it. Think of depression. The best way to get out of depression is to move. I know sometimes people think like, oh, I have to go see a therapist. I have to go see a life coach. Listen, if you want to get out of depression, you move. What happens when you're in that state of depression is that you just stay stagnant. You stay still. The vibrations in your body start to lower. And then that right there is causing your brain to focus on only the problem. What is the problem, not the solution? When you started to look for the solution, you said you started to listen to uh, Tony Robbins, personal development resources, start to look at like neural stuff for the brain, neuroplasticity, trying to get your thoughts in a different wavelength. Was that maybe the most difficult thing you have done in your life? Or has there been something more difficult that you had to go through? Yeah, I think that, you mean that experience? Yeah, that was definitely the dark night of the soul. 
I was definitely at my lowest point in life because again, like you said, I, I was dealing with it alone. You know, family and friends said, kind of turned their backs on me. You know, when you're in a black community, you know, when you start looking different, there's only two diagnoses that black people give you. One, you're either sick or then two, you're either on drugs or something like that. And so when you start looking different, then people say, no, you know, I'm not going to mess with you. So they turn their backs on you. And so I had to, you know, I had to learn how to first heal the trauma, right? Stop thinking about perpetuating the same cycle of abuse, right? In my own relationships. And then I had to, like I said, go within and then begin to really empower myself. And I guess what triggered it was I was listening to Les Brown and he was telling his story about how he was labeled uneducatable and mentally challenged. And he was in, he found himself in a classroom that he wasn't supposed to be in, right? And the teacher called him up and said, you know, come up here and work out this problem. And Les Brown said, I can't, you know, because one, I'm labeled uneducatable and two, I'm mentally challenged. And the teacher told him to never let anyone else's perception of you determine your reality. And when I heard that, something clicked and I said, yes, you know, from there on, I'm not going to let anyone else's perception of me determine my reality. Then I started to read and I got introduced to Tony Robbins, right? Tony Robbins helped me to change my state. Joe Dispenza helped me to rewire my brain because he talks a, a lot about neuroplasticity, but he also talks about repetition. And so the more you can imagine and visualize and mentally rehearse being the person that you want to be, right, then the brain starts to produce the, the neural connections that are associated with that. And the more you do it, the stronger those connections become. And so biologically and chemically, right, you start to become someone different because that's what the brain is producing, right, all the time. We become what we think about the most. So that, like I said, was the dark night of the soul. But once I decided that I was going to change, I had to make a conscious decision to change and then go within and then really begin to know myself in order to grow myself. Yeah. And you do have to want to make that change for the people who are maybe teetering on the edge of that cliff. And they're like, I have to make a difference. I have to do something. But fear can be stopping them. Maybe lack of knowledge can be stopping them. Maybe just your upbringing and who you identify is stopping you. Because as you said, the story with Les Brown, you know, he was identified by someone else saying, you know, he's mentally ill, he can't be educated. That was who he became. But if you tell yourself the opposite, if you have teachers, if you have mentors, if you have coaches that say, you know what, I understand you went through that, but I'm going to give you a new narrative to follow. And so the narrative that many people are going through is not helpful. It's toxic in a sense, because it's just stopping them from reaching their full potential. And what you do is you help people not only understand themselves, but to go after the things that maybe they're a bit afraid to go after, maybe to go after the life that they think is only for the select few. Because in order to transform your life, you have to transform yourself, you have to transform your mindset, and you have to transform the old person that you once were. Because sometimes you think that you're that kid that was in class that couldn't read or that stuttered. And that was your identity, but that does not have to be your future. And so I would like for us to go down that path now to look at the steps to how someone can begin to transform their life. What is your process to help people? Yeah, I'm glad you asked me that. The first thing I would actually suggest that someone does is to, there are three defining moments that happens in people's lives. And there's actually more, but it's three major ones. And those can be a contributed to certain stories. Mine was, the first one was my mom saying, you know, you started to look like your dad and you started, right? That's part of my story. And, you know, that actually led to me becoming a victim of the Pamelian effect. And that, but that story, you know, has some lessons that's attached to it, right? There's another story about my brother and I having our grades and, you know, I wasn't good in school. I was a C and D student, right? But he was a D and F student. We're coming home and we're sharing our report cards to, to each other. And I'm looking at his and I'm seeing all D's and F's. I mean, and back then, right, they could use red ink. So his whole report card was just full of red. And I was like, man, they're going to get you, man, because I don't know what you're doing in school, but you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. But mine wasn't that great either, right? 
But anyway, we come to the house and my mom, you know, says, you know, hey, let me see your report cards. And, you know, we show our report cards and then she shakes her head and says, you know, I'm not sure what you guys are doing in school, but I'm gonna let your dad talk to you, right? And my dad being, like I said, the person that he was when he came home, right? He came right into the kitchen where we were at and we were eating. And he started cussing us out and saying we were dumb, that we were stupid, that we were not never amount to anything. And and while he was saying that, I got mad and I said, No, you under my breath, of course. You said I said, No, you're the dumb, stupid, dumb, blankety blank, right? And then I made a conscious decision that I was going to do better and be better. So the point I'm making is that there's three defining moments that happen in your life that leads to three stories. Once you begin to understand those three defining moments that, and you write them out as your story, they will actually lead to a common theme that runs through your life. Once you begin to understand what that common theme is, right, that common theme then becomes your why statement, right? Simon Sinek says, you know, calls it your why statement. I call it your identity statement, but it's all based on who you are at the core. It's based on all of the things that you've gone through. So every everything that you've gone through in your life, every experience that you've experienced has lessons that are tied to it. And then it leads to one, one common theme. Once you find that common theme, that runs everything in your life that you can build life and the business that you want based on that common theme. But the problem is most people don't know who they are at the core because they haven't, they haven't done a story analysis of who they are. And so once they do that, identify the common theme, once you identify the common theme, then you start to visualize, you start to imagine how your life could be in every detail, right? From your relationships to your life, to your business, you visualize everything, right? And then you, as you begin to visualize, right, you'll start to have dreams. And then those dreams, if they're big enough, they'll scare you. But if they're not, then that means you need to dream bigger, right? And so as you begin to dream bigger, then you'll have doubts, you'll have fears, you'll have insecurities that come up. You want to become aware of those, not so you can work on them, because the problem is that most people are working on themselves, trying to fix themselves instead of trying to create themselves. George Bernard Shaw said, life is not about finding yourself, it's about creating yourself. And so a lot of us spend time working on ourselves instead of creating the person that we truly want to be. Once you start to identify who that is and you start to, like I said, dream and dream big, then you want to think about the steps that you need to take in order to manifest that reality. So as you begin to manifest it or see it in your mind's eye, then you map it out because in mapping it out, the brain starts to connect what you see and what you've been visualizing. And then you put massive action to that's what you do in a nutshell yeah no all that's really good i love the aspect of having a story analysis and writing out you know your three stories because it's going to determine who you are and sometimes people they don't know who they are they're always looking for something different something new and they're always going after the wrong things in life until you pinpoint what you truly need because it's easy to see someone who's doing something. Let's say someone's an entrepreneur, they have a business and you might say, oh, I want to have a successful business too. But everything that is involved in having that successful business to maybe the long nights, maybe the cold calling, maybe the things that you don't like to fear, maybe you know the aspect of you have to be your own person, your own boss, that right there can take away the comfort of getting a paycheck. And so sometimes people, they think they want something, but they don't understand their true purpose or their why. And I think if they spend some time, wrote out their three stories, they're going to be able to find that why so much more readily. But the issue with many people is that they would rather remain in the dark. How many people do you know, especially people who come to your program, they just throw things in the corner. I'll do it later. This is not a pro you know like a problem for me today. This is a tomorrow problem. And eventually it starts to pile up, it starts to pile up. And now they're so stressed, they're so anxious where they're at the point where they can't even move. They know their story, but now they are just riddled with so much stress and so much anxiety. How can someone get out of that place? Yeah, again, it boils down to having clarity about who you are and what you really want to create in life. 
because you're going to have opposition, you're going to have doubts, you're going to have fears. And if you concentrate on staying stuck in the mindset that you're at, then that's what the brain is going to keep producing. And you said it earlier in that whatsoever you think, that's what you become. So, you know, the moment you stop thinking about what you can't do, what you can't have, how your life is, and you start thinking about what you can do and what you can have, then, right, then the brain begins to shift. It begins to create the neural connections or the neurons that are connected to that way of thinking. It boils down to shifting the way you think. And so I tell my clients a lot of times, right, I use a caterpillar into a butterfly analysis, right? A caterpillar has the potential to become a butterfly, but not all caterpillars become butterflies, right? The caterpillar has to choose to become a butterfly. It has to choose to spin his own cocoon. That means it has to do the work and then it has to go within. And as it goes within, it, it has no choice but to get to know himself because there's no one else in the cocoon with him. So he has to understand his mind. He has to understand you know, what makes him do the things he does. But the moment the metamorphosis process begins is the moment that the caterpillar stops thinking about being a caterpillar and he starts thinking about being a butterfly. No, that's actually a good analogy because many people are just stuck being a cat like a caterpillar and they're just worried about caterpillar jobs and cat like a caterpillar mindset instead of a butterfly mindset where you can fly free, where you can uh, see the world in new regards, new heights. But we see our one scene sometimes and we just get stuck there. And I find that when people take just a step, it doesn't have to be a big step. You know, like, let's say someone who's trying to get into a better health. You don't have to go to the gym, get all this fancy equipment. Just start walking around the block. Just start small. When you were going through that transformation, you started to listen to some Tony Robbins. You started to read some books. You started to look at your mindset. You started small. And I think people, they fail to understand the power of starting small, just saying, you know, I'm going to take the first step. As the caterpillar said, I am going to start thinking about being a butterfly. He did. You don't have to worry about being a butterfly. You don't have to worry about being in the cocoon yet. You just have to start to think about it. And when you start to focus on something that you want, if you give yourself some action, if you give yourself some good directive, you are sure enough to get it, but you do have to remain consistent. I want to talk about consistency with you now because people can dream, people can hope, people can find their why, people can understand their story. But if they don't remain consistent, especially in the moments where maybe of fear, in the moments of uncertainty and doubt, how can someone remain consistency? I understand the goal is going to be so much sweeter, but how can you tell someone who's just Again, they're just coming from that low place. They don't have much belief in themselves. Think about the Les Brown stuff again. They're just really low. People have been shutting them down their whole life, and they have developed this identity inside them where they can always retreat to because that's their now comfort zone. That's their safe spot. How can we be consistent to elevate ourselves? I think consistency boils down to having a dream having a vision, as you mentioned, you just changing what you see in your mind's eye will change what you experience in reality. Malcolm Gladwell talks about creating or becoming an expert takes 10,000 hours, right? But Malcolm didn't have the, the, you know, the new research on neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, right? That says that you can visualize, you can imagine, you can mentally rehearse, right, in your mind for 10,000 hours and still get the same results, right? Because the brain doesn't know what's real or imagined, right? It only knows what you think and what you feel. And so the more you can, you can visualize the dreams that you want to have, visualize the life that you want to have, visualize yourself as the person that you want to be that can accomplish those dreams, then the more you do it, in your mind, then again, like I said, the brain is going to start to produce those chemical compounds that's associated with the way that you're thinking. And then if you put your emotions into it, right, then you start to get your body involved in it. And now, like you said, you're in this environment and right, you're, you're only in it in your mind. It's not that you've created it, but in your mind, you've created it. And so as you create it in your mind, based on what it is that you want to create, then you start to experience it right ahead of time because 
as you begin to experience it ahead of time, your mind and your body begins to prepare you to get into that state. So I would suggest that when you start to visualize, just dreaming about what it is that you want your life to be, you know, start thinking about who you want, you know, who you want to be. And that goes back to once you begin to find out who you are at the core, you get to, you get to find the, the common theme that runs through your life, then that will tell you, okay, I'm, I'm a transformational coach, or I am a empowerment coach, or I am whatever it is that you've gone through, right? That, that has caused that you to experience what you've experienced that led to your common theme. Once you find that common theme, everything else in your life starts to change because then once you know who you are at the core, your true authentic self, then once you start to visualize it and over and over again, then the body and the mind begins to change. just like the caterpillar. Once you begin to start thinking about flying to the top of the mountain, you know, reaching the, your highest potential, doing whatever butterflies do, that's the only thing in the difference between a caterpillar's mindset and a butterfly's mindset is his imagination, right? A butterfly's mindset, it's imagination. The only thing that limits a butterfly is its imagination. If it, so if it chooses to fly to the top of the tree, all it has to do is set his mind to the top of the tree and flap his wings and fly. If it chooses to go to the top of the mountain, it sets its sight to the top of the mountain, flap his wings and fly, all right? Whereas a caterpillar's mindset is limited by its physicality. For one, it can only do, it can only inch along, right? Carol Dweck calls it, you know, the growth mindset uh, or in the fixed mindset. So when you have a fixed mindset, everything that you see is, is what you can achieve, right? Because you limit it by your physicality. But when you become a butterfly, your mindset is unlimited. What we want for our clients is that unlimited mindset. I know Sometimes in life, we're not going to get the best hands, especially kids. You can't choose your parent. You can't choose your environment. We have to grow out of those things sometimes. I mean, I didn't grow up in the best environment either, but I was able to learn from that and then grow from it. And today my life is wildly and drastically different. And my family's life is wildly and drastically different. And I hope for my children that they don't fall back to what maybe my father did or what my parents were going through. Because it seems like that old um, adage of, you know, strong times create uh, weak men. And so, you know, or, or, or good times create weak men. And so what we want is to always have that cycle kind of always jump back a step. So we never have easy times creating weak men. And what we want is to find strength, not only in ourselves, but in who we can become. Because when you're young, yes, the world might feel so big. You might be thinking, I know when I was, I mean, I wasn't really the um, best student either because boys just learn differently. You know, boys want to run. They want to play. Last thing you want to do with a boy is sit him down. Like my son, I'm very aware of how he's going to learn what's going to make him succeed. And when he brings home a report card, maybe C's and B's or D's or whatever he gets, I'm not going to belittle him. I'm not going to say that, hey, you know, you should be smart or you should be smart or you shouldn't be dumb. It's what my family did, if I ever got a, a bad grade, it's just not helpful. And so we have to look at how he learns or what he needs. And everyone is going to need something different. And that is why I have you on, Gerard, so we can help people find what they need, how they can transform their life, and how they can begin that process of starting to think like the caterpillar so they can one day turn into the butterfly. As we begin to wrap up, I would love to get some final words from you and then for you to tell the audience where they can find you. I appreciate it, man. This uh, has definitely been empowering and, and enlightening. I mean, you, 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 left, you, know, you had a lot of good questions and I appreciate those questions. Uh, hopefully that you know, I helped some people who, who needed that. That's my goal. That's my passion in life is to help as many people as I can to become the best version of themselves that they can be. And so they can live the life that they, they want to live. I mean, they can reach me at GerardGrogans.com. I'm on Facebook, Gerard Grogan's. I'm on Instagram, um, LinkedIn. My main goal in Doing anything that I do is to transform people. That's that's why I call myself a transformational life coach because I know what it takes to transform myself, but I also know what it takes to transform someone else. And so hopefully I can help. Well, it's not only a hope, it is going to be a certainty. 
I find coaches that have gone through the ringer, who have gone through hardship, are well more suited to be coaches than someone who maybe comes from a plush household with no problems. It's more difficult for them to put themselves into someone else's shoes. And I'm not saying that if you put yourself in someone's shoes that you're going to automatically know everything they have gone through. I don't think anyone will know what someone truly goes through, but we can have the empathy and we can say, you know what? I went through hard things. You went through hard things. I'm not saying mine is the same, but let's do this together because I know there's a way out of it. If we're not in a circumstance right now, we can change it. So the work that you do is transforming lives. It could be a person at a time. It could be a group at a time. And I know people are going to be in good hands when they reach out to you. All the links are going to be in the description box below. I encourage everyone to follow him and learn more about what Gerard is doing to help transform people's lives. I want to thank you so much, Gerard, for coming on, spending some time with me and talking about your work. All right, everyone, I'd like to thank you so much for watching that interview with Gerard Grogans and myself. As you can see his backstory, I mean, when he was talking, I was like, I went through that same thing. And it could be the black community, but I know it's not just the black community. It can be any community. And him and I talked offline a little bit after the recording. We talked about the problems and we talked about how it was becoming exasperated to the point where one coach, I mean, is trying to change the world. One person is trying to change the world. And I mean, we are making a difference. We are doing really good work, but it's a communal thing. It's a societal thing. And I mean, depending on where you are in the world, it's like we, especially here in the West, I mean, our society is very individualized, right? We fight our own fights. We have our own feelings. And so when we express ourselves, especially here in America, we are so focused on how we should be feeling, not so much of the betterment for what we can be doing. I'm a huge advocate for traditional values. If you know anything about me, I'm not going to shove them down your throat. I'm just an advocate for them. And I believe that if we can look at the family unit once more, and I understand that it can be difficult to give yourself a different type of mindset. But if we look at, for example, China, I'm not saying you have to like China, but they view things as family. So we have our patriarchal or matriarchal stuff. This is beyond that. This is what is good for the family. What is going to be good for the community versus what is good for myself? What is going to make me most happy? And I understand that, especially right now, most people, they want their happiness. They want their cake. They want to eat it too. There's nothing wrong with having your own personal ideals. It's not selfish. And I know sometimes people, they'll come get coaching and then we start to look at if they're coming from a place where they're giving, 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 and they're sacrificing their own livelihood and their own happiness, we start to say, well, let's start to fill our cup first. And the first thing they start to think is that this is selfish. But it's not selfish to want to take care of yourself. I always say, if you're in a position that is better than where you are right now, imagine how many more people that you can help. Think about the money in your bank account. Let's say we five times the money in your bank account. How many more people can you help? We look at different aspects like that. If we don't want to five times it, let's double it. You can still help more people with more than what you have. I know sometimes you can be living in abundance, but for the majority of people, it is a struggle. Many people are in a mindset of scarcity. Many people are in this battle by themselves, when in reality, the only thing they have to do is ask for help. And one of the most powerful things I have learned in 2023, I know I have probably learned this before, but I really put it to the test in 2023. I know we're in 2024 is I started to ask, ask questions. I started to ask for favors. I started to ask for help. It wasn't until then where I said, I don't have to do this by myself. And this is not me having a cop out or whatever someone might call it, is I'm just trying to change the way my mindset is. It's because I can do everything myself. I can pay my own bills. I can do most of the stuff in the house by myself. I mean, to be honest, it's probably nothing I can't do, except for like, it was like, carpentry or like electrical work or plumbing. Actually, I do some plumbing. I'm not good at it. But we can ask for help. We can delegate some work. We can give ourselves a better opportunity for tomorrow. But yet many people, they're afraid to, to ask. They're afraid to talk about their story. 
this is where bravery comes in. You have to be brave. You have to be someone who's willing to put yourselves out there, get your neck out there, per se, right? There's a lot of truth behind what Gerard said about the five people you associate with are going to be the people that are going to help elevate you. And maybe you don't have those people right now. Maybe you need some help finding them. I know many coaches who have mastermind groups that can help you find those people. Here at Reverend Concepts, we have a mastermind group that can help you associate with other people who are in growth mindsets and just trying to get you into those groups of people so you can start to work off each other. And the accountability is there. And then the success is there too, because again, we want results. And the results that you want have to be attained because you want them. Not because you simply think about them. You have to give some action, right? The person who thinks about becoming a millionaire, you have to have a plan. You have to have a course of action. And if you come from a low place right now, from your childhood, from maybe even your current living circumstances, maybe something bad happened to you and you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to get out of this hole. Just ask. Ask for a ladder. Ask for a rope. Ask for some assistance. One of the reasons why I started the business, and I have talked about this many times before, is because many people are growing up into this brokenness. They're children that are being told that they're not going to amount to anything. There are teachers telling these children that they're not going to amount to anything. Gerard even said about his parents, talked about the Les Brown story. The teacher said that he couldn't do it. There are so many people who are going to say that you can't do it, but I'm here and I'm going to say that you can do it. I'm going to be one of those people that say you can do it. F everybody else, you can do it. I don't know who's telling you this, but what I'm going to tell you is you can do it. You can make a difference. You can be the person that you want to become. If you need me in your corner, you let me know. I'll be one of those five people. There's no reason why people cannot give back to other people. There's no reason why someone has to be fighting this fight alone. There's no reason why someone has to feel like they can't get out of a rut because they weren't given the tools, because they were shorthanded. There's always a way if you make the way. And sometimes the way is just going to be making a choice, making the choice to follow, to subscribe to begin to ask, to take action, to be brave once more. I understand that it's more difficult to fix a broken adult than it is to make sure that a child doesn't become broken. But with our system and the way things are in the world, it's almost inevitable that the majority of children that are coming out are going to have some scars, some trauma. And to be honest, most people are going to have those trauma. Think about the three stories that Gerard was saying. We all have those circumstances, but yet those circumstances can either define us or they can refine us. And I want them to refine you and to transform you into the person that the world is waiting for. Something that I would like to see. I'm waiting for it. If you're ready, if you're willing, if you're able, begin that process today. Reach out to Gerard, reach out to us here at Reverend Concepts. We will love to hear your stories. We will love to hear what type of future you have for yourself, you envision for yourself because it can become reality. It only takes you. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, email me coachinginsession.gmail.com, and I will see everyone on the next episode of Coaching In Session. Until then, everyone take care.